Government is a greedy piglet that suckles on a taxpayer's teat until they have sore, chapped nipples. Happy Election Day! <laughs> Get out there and vote. I'm just telling you. Uh, love me some Ron Swanson. Saw some great Ron Swanson memes today. We'll have to get to those later. One more thing before we move on to talk about election stuff today and, and get to some phone calls. I, after watching the the morning newscast, like I told you, I recorded two of them and I watched the other one live. Watched the Today Show live, which I haven't done in years. Never watched the Today Show. It reminded me why. Right? They've got an, they're, they're promoting some interview with some guy named Bob Harper. I don't even know who this guy was. I guess he's some sort of fitness guru, but he had a heart attack, right? Mm. Almost died. This is what they're promoting during the show. He's the guy from Biggest Loser. I mean, like he was one of the um, coaches on Biggest Loser. Okay, all right. So So that's why it's a big deal because he's all fit and healthy and... Yeah, but it's not a big deal. Well, in I mean, the scope of the is. news <laughs> in the morning, <laughs> right. who gives a rat's patootie no, that this right. guy had a heart attack, right? Was that right. in the fourth hour? Or was that in the no! first hour? <laughs> no! This was at 7 a.m. this morning. Oh, I thought maybe it was so, the fourth so hour. So here were the NBC News top headlines when I went to their website. Right. Number one. Trump administration floats compromise on health care. Number two, see what your state is doing to close the gender wage gap. There's some fake Very news important. for you. There is no gender wage gap. North Carolina Tar Heels win the NCAA championships, number three. Number four, St. Peter's Way, uh, St. Petersburg subway bomber ID'd. And number five, the NCAA lifts the ban on North Carolina after the HB2 bathroom bill repeal. No story in those five is more important or of a bigger scope than the fact that Susan Rice unmask the identities of innocent Americans from foreign surveillance and distributed it widely through the intelligence community. I'm not even accusing her of leaking it, although I wouldn't say that's a stretch. But there was no reason for those names to be unmasked, except they happen to be the top four or five people in the Trump campaign. Maybe they didn't want to hit the audience early with uh, big news like that, so they're going to wait till the, till the <laughs> that's second hour. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You have it. to get a couple of cu- cups that's of it. coffee before you hit, hit I'm the sorry. public with this. I worked, I, you know, I mean, I worked morning news for 13 years, and you, you, you're taught in journalism school, broadcast journalism school, you prioritize your stories by importance. The most important stories are at the top. And and this is the garbage that you're you're they're feeding you on the Today Show at NBC. It's just it's worthless. Fake news, honestly. Yeah, that some of that is fake news. And you know, and I wonder how much. And I'm certainly not trying to make excuses uh, uh, for the network. And I hope this doesn't sound chauvinist. But uh, maybe the demographics say that a, a certain audience watches the, that show at that time of the morning, and that demographic may not be interested in hardcore news they want a softball kind of stuff like that my suspicion is that you're on to something but you're you're off just a little bit okay people who watch nbc <laughs> don't want to hear bad news about democrats right that's got more to do with it okay. i think you're right okay. they've done their studies they knew who their listeners are absolutely they knew who their mm-hmm. people are those are their peeps all right so uh some big some big election issues going on today right. including you know we got some numbers out on this st louis city race as mm-hmm. as hopeful as i was that andrew jones yeah. as a as an african-american conservative republican or at least as a republican i don't know how conservative he is might draw some attention from people in st louis that feel like they've kind of been left in the wake by the Democratic Party in this city for the past 60 years. Well, unfortunately, what I would have liked to have seen in my in my best pipe dream scenario is I know that a lot of African-American Democrats are not happy that Lyda Cruzan will probably be the next mayor. So I would have liked to have seen some chess, not checkers move going and go ahead and vote for Andrew Jones, the African-American Republican, see what he can do. And if he doesn't uh, do as well as that you want, then just vote him out in four years and put, right. back a, put, put a Democrat in. And that way you can kind of show that the African-Americans can show the Democratic Party, hey, you can't take us for granted and, and think that you have our vote. We'll vote for the, for I the think uh, black Republican. I think he'll get the most support of any Republican candidate that's run in a long time, but he was polling at 17% in the poll I saw yesterday. Um, 
and she was at like 60. Yeah. He's so, a very dynamic guy. Oh, he has a chance to meet him. He's fr- he comes from a business background. He's got a master's degree. And he is what St. Louis really needs is someone that's going to come in, break up the status quo, bring in some new ideas. All that you see with any of these candidates is is the Democrats. They come in and they just want to basically keep the status quo. No new no, new ideas, no way, no ideas to energize the city. And I think Andrew would have uh, would have done that. Well, you're not energized by you're not energized by pair of soccer shorts and some cleats in a new stadium over here uh, around I'm the corner? I'm not a soccer fan, so <laughs> no. If, if it brings revenue and brings prestige to St. Louis and, and taxpayers don't have to pay for all of it or they get some type of benefit out of it, I would probably support it, but I'm not a, I'm not a soccer fan. Soccer <laughs> is a gay sport. When I was playing Little League, uh, JFL football, JFL and soccer occurred at the same time. And there was no way my mother was going to let me run around in 30-degree weather with <laughs> shorts on. So that was my choice. I didn't, I didn't have a choice. Uh, didn't when I was, soccer football. When I was growing up and had to walk 12 miles to school barefoot uphill, I'm just teasing, wow. of course. Um, the the soccer, soccer wasn't even a varsity sport yeah. at our high school. We wouldn't let them wow. practice on the football field because we wouldn't want them tearing it up with their cleats. Well, so that, that's how that's how far removed I am from being a soccer fan. I just I didn't it wasn't much of a sport where I grew up, yeah. and I just didn't grow up knowing that much about it. So. Now I was in the seventies. I was a big Pele fan. Okay, does that yeah, mean, I remember him. Does that yeah. mean anything? He's the only, probably the only name I remember, but I remember <laughs> Pele. Pele. Yeah, I do. <laughs> Absolutely. I remember seeing him in like Wheaties commercials or something. <laughs> exactly. Let me get to a couple of phone calls here uh, from folks uh, calling in. Let me see. Um, Larry, you're on the air. Go ahead. Hi. How you guys doing? Great. I, thanks. This afternoon. <laughs> doing I think well. That, I up? think I know that voice. <laughs> hey, listen. I, I, uh, I've i been listening, Mark, to you and Chris this afternoon. And, and I just want to say to you guys, listen, I absolutely believe the Democrats are doing a massive favor um, for Republicans. Um, listen, it, it's only because of establishment Republicans and out-of-touch Democrats um, creating an environment which allowed uh, Trump to become the next president of the United States. That we're even looking at this right now, without them being unfair as they are, without the mainstream media carrying the water um, right now for the Democrats, we are probably looking at uh, Hillary Clinton as president. Because Americans right now can see this. And I believe most Americans look at this and they've really gotten sick and tired of looking and listening to this nonsense. For the longest, I mean, anybody who's fair-minded can right now look and see that there's something really wrong with all of the leaks that's coming out. But yet, no one's being surveilled, though. I mean, they're 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 using semantics, they're using play on words. Well, yeah, yeah we're not wiretapping. Okay, great, you're not wiretapping. But if you want me to believe you're not listening in on on some of that uh, of the Trump team's um, uh, transition team. You have too much information that you probably shouldn't have otherwise to make me believe that. And I believe most Americans can see that. Yeah, I think that's a great point, Larry. Thank you for the phone call. Um, you know, Eli Lake, the Bloomberg reporter who broke this story, he, he made that point. He's like, here, here's what you need to take away from this. Forget the Trump transition team for a moment. Mm-hmm. If they can play that loose and fast with the rules when they just, when it fits yeah. their mood at the at top levels of government, how do you know they're not listening to you? Also, How do you know they're not listening to him yeah. or her? I mean, they could do this to anybody. And they have, remember? They, they clearly to have. Angela right. Merkel and right. other foreign leaders. They were listening to uh, their phone calls. So It's it's pathetic. Uh, Lynn, thanks for calling in. What's your question? Hi. Listen, well, when I started, of course, I only had one thing to say, but now I've got a couple of other ones, <laughs> but they're short. Um, uh, I wanted to talk about Chris. When Chris was talking earlier about, you know, how this is this whole Susan Rice thing and the leaks and all that kind of stuff is, is becoming so involved and so heavy and so muddled, and it's it's so burdensome to hear day after day, week after week, um, and that people are just not going to be interested. But, you know, I encourage everybody to be interested because this is exactly what politics do. Something goes wrong or something is intentionally done that's illegal, and they want to load it down with uh, a burdensome, uh, maybe, you know, sideshow stuff and all that kind of stuff uh, to, to distract you, a bunch of smoke and mirrors. Um, so don't give up. Just keep, you know, keep trotting through. Every time we hear it, there's a little something new that comes up that's, that's uh, you know, telling us exactly what went on. 
Um, the second thing I wanted to say was that you were talking got, about... I got, about a, I got about 30 seconds. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. That ABC, CBS, and NBC, the news in the morning and in right. the evening are becoming TMZ light. <laughs> yeah. So I don't watch any of them. And the second one, the, the third one is, is that we have a cable... You know, now we watch cable. We used to have just regular stations, ABC, NBC, and CBS. If we didn't have cable now, we would know what we know now. So I'm oh, really glad you. that we have it. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for pointing that out, Lynn. I mean, honestly... Just think if those were your only three sources of news like they were when our parents were our age. I mean, I say thank God for Fox News because even if you do view news from a conservative viewpoint, you're going to hear a side that you don't hear from ABC, CBS, NBC, NPR, it's PBS. The- and even if you agree with it or not, at least you're hearing a different side so you can weigh it to both and see what, what That's you a great believe. point. Uh, Chris Arps, thanks for coming in. Thank you. At C. Arps on Twitter. Remember our Twitter poll. We'll talk about that more next hour. We're talking about uh, uh, Claire McCaskill, and we're going to hopefully get to Catherine Herridge when we come back.